Mr. Pinecon can now learn new tasks so that we don't have to retype the same prompts over and over again. So let's create a task for adding a colorful icon next to the headings. We select the heading and ask Mr. Pinecon to add an icon after the text. And now let's follow up on this to refine the task and ask it to add some spacing between the text and the icon and also to color the icon with primary color. And once we are happy with the result, we hover over the last response and click on the book icon to learn this task. And now Mr. Pinecon is examining what was done and learning the task. And the first time we do that, we have to select the location where the database of our learned tasks will be saved. So let's click select the location and create a new folder. Where the file will be saved. It's a standard JSON file and we can change the name if we want. And we have to do this only once. And uh, in case we would want to change the location, we can go into Settings and the Learn Tasks database URL is set here. But we don't need to do that now. So, okay, now the new task is created. Let's run it now on the second heading. We could either, so first let's select the heading and we could either click here on run or we can always access learned commands by clicking on the magic wand for AI assistant commands and then go here into the learned submenu and select our learned task. And we can see that the assistant added the icon and the icon matches the content of the heading. So it, it did a really good job. Let's check how the task is defined. Here we have the edit command. And this opens up a dialog window for task settings. And we can move it around. It's not a model dialog so that we can uh, interact with the page while we are editing the task. The task name and description are automatically generated by inspecting the instructions and, and the code changes. And here we can see that instructions were also kind of um, combined based on what of on our initial prompt and also on follow-up instructions. And we are using GPT-4 to come up with this information and it usually does a very good job. So scrolling down, we also have example code section where we have the starting code and the resultant code. Both of these examples are included in the prompt whenever we run the task. And this helps uh, the, the AI model to understand our intention, not just from the instructions, but also based on the example. And as a result of this approach, such tasks usually 
<clears throat> run quite well even without GPT-4. So it, here we can see that GPT-4 is switched off. So we are using GPT-3.5 for these commands. The benefits of that are, of course, the cost. It's like 10 times less expensive and also the speed. Uh, GPT-3.5 is usually much faster than GPT-4. So, so far we, we used the task on the headings, like the same, uh, on the same element where the task was defined. But we can run it on any other element. So let's try, let's select a button and see what will happen. And learn tasks are also available down here with the test button, learned text. So we see that the icon was added, but because we instructed that the color should be primary, we can't really see it when the background is also uh, colored with primary color. So what we can try to do is, let's give it a follow-up instruction. If the background is using primary color, use white color for the icon. Let's follow up. And now we have the white icon on primary background. So it would be nice to add this um, kind of refinement to our task. So we can go here again on the book icon, we click it, and then we say update the task. And here we can see that the follow-up instruction was added to the task. So let's save it. And by doing that, our task became smarter. It now knows how to handle situations where primary color is not suitable. So let's try. So first of all, let's add, add um, the new headings. To see if it still works. And it did a good job. How about here? Also. So let's try again one if we delete the icon from the button and now run the task on our button with primary background. And it did a good job. So in this way, we can teach the AI assistant many tasks. And by providing examples and, and by using this approach, we, we kind of optimize the chance that the task can successfully run on GPT 3.5, making it very cost effective and very fast. So one comment regarding the icons, so here, Mr. Pinecon added font awesome icons to the document. And if we go into properties panel, we can see that these are font awesome icons that also have controls. And the reason is that on this page, in manage libraries and plugins, we enabled font awesome icons. And then when this framework is enabled in PineGrow, it instructs the AI assistant to use font awesome icons if icons are needed. And we could use other icons, for example, bootstrap icons, but then you have to take care that the bootstrap icon resources are included on the page. 
and then you can use the prompt, you can instruct the AI assistant to use bootstrap icons when needed. And if we would notice that the task doesn't run well on GPT 3.5, we have two options. We can either toggle on GPT 4 and run the task, or we can go into the, we can go and edit the task. And then down here we have options and we can say that this task requires GPT 4. So in this case, GPT-4 will be used whenever we run this task, even if it's not enabled here. So learned tasks are very efficient and helpful. They let you build up a database of useful skills and then reuse them across all your work, um, across all your projects.